big team match. Introducing first, and in the corner to my right, from Miami, Florida, Dino Minnelli. From anywhere he wants to be from, Steve the Brawler Lala, and from Moscow, Russia, comrade Nick Busick. And they are accompanied by their man manager, Sir Samuel F. Kent. And in the corner to my right, their opponents. First, the Southern Tag Team Champions, Ranger Ross and Mr. Wrestling number two, and their partner, Chick Donovan. Chick Donovan. All right, Jerry, this ought to be a great six-man tag. We've got grudges all over each other in the ring. The referee like has called Ross for the bell. To start. All right, I, I guess we should have known it was going to be like this. All six men are in the ring, and let's be honest, the referee just doesn't have a chance right now. All he can do is hope to get things settled down a little bit and get a match started. We've got Lawler outside the ring, Manelli outside the ring, and there goes Busick. All three men of Sir Samuel Kent are outside the ring now. And maybe Referee now. May be happy. Well, that's right. I was going to say this may be the opportunity for the Wolfman to get some law and order. All right, well. Sir Samuel Kent yelling at Busick, telling him to get in there and take care of Ranger Ross. And after the situation we saw here on TV last week, I would imagine that Ranger Ross would like nothing better than to get his hands and maybe a boot on Nick, uh, comrade and, Nick yeah. Busey. You know, at, uh, that manager, Sir Samuel, he gets a little upset when the crowd gets to go in with a weasel. Oh, right? doesn't he? Yeah. Reminds me of everywhere we've gone recently, people have been having signs with a picture of a weasel Is on it. Saying weasel, and it has just absolutely driven him crazy. Busick and Ross trying to uh, position one another now in the corner, and Busick throws a fist. Ross returns the favor. Nick Busick not very happy right this minute with the way things have gone. Sir Samuel Kent uh, you know, extraordinarily quiet down in the corner right now, Jerry. Yes, he is. He's not got a, you know, I tell you what, if I had a team out there and there's facing these three guys, you know, there's not a whole lot you can say. You know, you're going in there with uh, three as good a wrestlers as you find in the country today with Ranger Ross and Mr. Wrestling number two and Chick Donovan. Well, I tell you, it sure has been a pleasure for me to see that Chick Donovan came to his senses. And uh, the fans have just absolutely been thrilled with the return of the Chickster. Uh, you know, he admitted to me that he had been blinded by money and influenced by people like Dino Manelli and uh, Steve Lawler. And uh, he just, as he said, when you get up in the morning, you have to face yourself in the mirror. And he was just a little bit tired of the man he saw in the mirror. Well, you know, sometimes that'll happen, Joe. You know, somebody comes out and they got the opportunity to make a lot of money. You know, me or you or anybody else might, might jump at the chance. But finally, I'm glad he did. He's seen his way. and. And he's come back to being what he really wants to be, and that's the Chickster. You know, he loves kids more than anything. He's got the gym. He's got a program, you know, for battered kids. Yeah. And, you know, I just I couldn't see see him in that role. Well, I think he is a prime example of proof that money is not everything, that self-respect plays a big part in the life of a wrestler. And uh, it's just real good to see Chick back now uh, as a fan favorite. Right now in the ring, Ranger Ross with a headlock on Steve Lawler. Lawler trying to pull the trunks to uh, get a position on Ross. The referee sees it. Lawler throws him into the ropes. Off he comes, a big shoulder block. Crosses over, crosses over again. Comes off a big feel, and there goes Steve Lawler. Drop kick, and Lawler is down. Over he comes again, and now ties up the arm. I'm not sure Steve Lawler knows what day it is right now. I don't Jerry. think so. I mean, you know, he's really been moving in there. You know, All I right. tell you, you know, I was in wrestling a long time, and I quit now, but I love it, you know, more than anything. I'm happy to be here, and uh, I've done ordered uh, the pay-per-view for that uh, big thing that's coming up. Uh, coming up, Joe? All right, uh, let me see. We're probably here talking about the next big pay-per-view coming up, I believe, in March. That's right, you know, I think it's been showed out of uh, Dallas. You know, it's, it's amazing you know, how wrestling progressed and people can sit home and watch it. 
But to me, it's still nothing like going out and sitting in Oh, person. absolutely. I mean, pay-per-view and cable and shows like Superstars of Wrestling and Pro Wrestling this week have done more to bring wrestling into the homes of people than ever before. But it is nothing like sitting ringside in an arena and watching the action up close and being there and being part of the crowd. And there's nothing in the world like that. And I tell you right now, when Southern Championship Wrestling comes to your town, if you think it's great here on television, go out and see it in person because I'll tell you right now, there's nothing like it. Jerry, we've been telling the people now for a few weeks, we'd give them a number to call if they wanted to have Southern Championship Wrestling in their town. And I believe now we can give that number out. It's 404-887-3681. 404-887-3681. You can call that number and talk to them there at Southern Championship about coming into your town. Oh, and bring excitement right into your high school gym or your arena or your armory like we're seeing here on this great match. Now, we've got to take a break at this point. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes as the action continues. Of course, if anything happens, we'll bring it to you on videotape, but we'll be right back after this timeout. Welcome back to Southern Championship Wrestling. The match still going on in the ring. While you were gone, a lot of excitement took place, but we've ended up right back with Ranger Ross on the mat with Dino Minnelli. And now Dino taking advantage, turning Ross around. Uh, what's this move? Ross is coming right out of that leg scissors. And right now, he's got Dino Minnelli right back. Minnelli must have been in his headlock now, Jerry, for three or four minutes. It's got to be affecting his equilibrium. Well, I tell you what, when you squeeze on that head long enough, you know, you get to where you're losing your balance, you don't really know where you're at, and you're just putting a lot of pressure on one part. That's the greatest way to defeat somebody is if you just keep on working on one part, and you, you wire that down, you wire that down, and then they're vulnerable to be beaten with that. And All right. Dino Minnelli's turned it around and put him back in it again. You hear that weasel again. The crowd's getting up. He's getting a little, a little upset with being called the weasel. But I don't know. Maybe that name fits. Maybe uh, he is a weasel. As far as I'm concerned, it does. Mr. Dino Wrestling. Minnelli has taken quite a beating over the past four or five minutes, and now it's wrestling, too. And here's the, the, here's the example of a smart team. Wrestling, too, goes right after that headlock and keeps Minnelli. Now, Lawler started to come in. But here's Ranger Ross and Chick Donovan keeping him out. Jerry, let me ask you a question. In a six-man tag match like this, do you think there's just too much going on for one referee? I think in a tag match there's too much. As far as I'm concerned, I think there ought to be two referees in any tag match. You know, people get mad at a referee and they say, you know, he can't see. But a man can only see so much stuff. Look at this move. Gee, what a great move by Wrestling 2. And you know, a lot of times, you know, the people, if they got in that ring and they tried that referee's job, they'd have a little bit more sympathy for him because, you know, you can't see but so much stuff. That's right. There's, there's so much going on. Well, maybe what we ought to do is maybe we can talk to Gordon Clements and the people at Southern. Maybe there's a possibility that at least in a six-man tag like this, we can get a second referee. I think we ought to. I think, well, it's nothing to do with me, but I think they ought to do that, you know. And Gordon Clemens is the man to talk to about it. You know, earlier tonight I seen that uh, John Michaels, and he's he's looking fantastic. Uh, John Michaels is probably the fastest rising young star in the South today. I tell you, we get more letters and more comments from the fans out there, especially the young ladies, about John Michaels, and he sure has come on. And, uh, you know, this little escapade with he and Sir Sammy and his people and the midgets and everything that we had happen in the recent uh, past few weeks has really brought John Michaels to the attention of the fans out there. And I do think that uh, it's great that a professional like you who's been in the business as long as you have takes notice of these young guys coming up. Oh, he's a young guy. You know, him being pretty handsome may not hurt him either in this sport. That makes a lot of fans uh, attend to... Uh, to look at you and, and see what you're actually doing. And he's a, he's a tremendous wrestler. He's in good shape, and he's young, and he's just, he's, like you say, he's coming up fast. Look, look at, at the, the slug We've bed. got a slug. There are these two going at it. Nick Busick. Now, Busick, his worst nightmare has to be to be in the ring. Oh. oh. Now, that was as obvious of an illegal blow as you'll ever see in wrestling. i tell you what. 
there's, you know, Look at this. There's no room in wrestling for something like that. And if the referee had seen that, this match would have been over. I don't know if that would have been what Ranger Ross would want or not, but it would have been over. What a shame to see Ranger Ross taken down with such an illegal move like that. Now, Jerry, we're getting close on TV time. I figure we're sitting on probably two or three minutes left in TV time. We will stay with this match just as long as we can here on TV. Right now, though, Ranger Ross in trouble as Steve Lawler slams him, brings him down, goes for a big elbow. He misses, though. That can knock the wind out of you. When you hit that mat, you're expecting to hit some, a cushion, and you hit that hard canvas. I tell you, I've done it before myself. Jerry, they tell me we're down to 90 seconds of TV time here in this match. We've got this six-man tag match. We're down to about 90 seconds of time. We're going to have to see what happens, see if we can have a winner in 90 seconds. They drop Ranger Ross right across the throat. Ranger Ross down on the mat. Dino Manelli going for the pin. One. Two. We've got about 60 seconds left, Jerry. We've got about one minute of time left. Ranger Ross trying to fight out now, trying to get over to his corner. Dino Manelli not letting him do it. Dino Manelli, he's got him in the ropes. He comes off, he ducks down. We've got about 20 seconds left. We've got about 20, 30 seconds left. One, two, oh. All right, we're done. We're almost out of time. We're going to have to be leaving you. We're going to stay with this match just as long as we can. We are almost out of time. There goes Ross into the corner. Here comes Benelli. He ducks. There's the tag. That's it, folks. We're out of TV time. We're going to have to leave you. We'll keep the cameras rolling. And we'll be back with you next week on Southern Championship Wrestling from Georgia. The ongoing situation tag team championship wise is Tommy Rich and Steve Pritchard try to hang on to those titles. Not only against the Batten Twins, but against the Mod Squad. Uh, ah. We're wrestling at a, at a fever peak right now here in the Southern Wrestling area. Uh, Buddy Michaels may be at a fever peak right now because he's got wrestling to his knee into that, uh, into that shoulder blade. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Rick, he hadn't, uh, wrestling two hadn't used his million dollar knee, and when, when he uses that, it's usually, the, the match is usually over. Oh, he looked like he was poised <laughs> to get him ready to set speaking, for that million dollar knee. Speaking of devil, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Michaels doesn't look quite as eager to uh, jump out in the middle of the ring with wrestling two as he did just a couple of minutes ago, huh? Well, I, I imagine uh, the, the, uh, the desire has waned quite a bit because wrestling two is, is, is used in... You, look at, yeah, they're talking about the closed fist being used on wrestling, too. Buddy Michael's resorting to whatever he has to to even stay competitive. Uh-oh. If he's thinking wrestling about getting that head to going. If he's thinking about jumping on, too, he better get his best shot, and he better get it quick. As they say in my hometown of Tallapoosa, Georgia, you better bring your dinner bucket. Two of the side hands. Oh, now, oh, there's how you throw a right hand. That's huh? the way to do it. That's the way to do it. A little later this hour, we're going to be talking to Tommy Rich about a situation that occurred quite recently in uh, the USA Championship Wrestling area involving his cousins, uh, the RPM, Superstar Bill Dundee. More on that a little bit later. The Mod Squad here this hour, Akio Sato. A lot of great wrestling action still to come in the next 60 minutes. It looks like Wrestling 2 is, is working on the, uh, the head of, uh, of Buddy Michaels here, and down he goes. That big hand, you, when you get close to wrestling, too, you know, you shake his hand, you see just how big the fists are. I'm not going to say I feel sorry for Buddy Michaels. I'm just going to say I'm glad I'm not him. Uh, me, me, too. Whoa! And you know that tailbone in that lower back has definitely got to be hurting. Count of two, give the man credit. He managed to power out. But wrestling, two hovering right above him. Shoots in that front face lock. Rick, we're excited that Southern Championship Wrestling is uh, coming to places like Columbus, uh, Rome, Marietta. Yes. We'll be, by the way, we'll be back at, uh, at Henderson's Arena on August the 7th. It's a Sunday night. More about that later. There's the knee.
You, that's what you were wanting to see. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's... <laughs> You know, wrestling, too, is, is like, it's a point of pride with him that all these people are coming in here trying to, trying to take him out, trying to collect that $5,000. And he's going to show whoever that they're going to have to work real, real hard to get that five grand. Now, you and I have talked about it before. You know, I know you being a big Mr. Wrestling number 2 fan. Uh, kind of like the way I was, uh, and still am, uh, the, the Bruiser Brody. Rick, kind of guy. I, 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 uh, uh, the the, the uh, day I found out about it, Rick, I, I spent most of the day trying to track you down, and I know that uh, I, I grieve along with you because I know you and him are very, very close. I appreciate and, it, buddy. To all the friends and the family and to the fans of Bruiser Brody, he will definitely be missed. Yeah. He was one of a kind, Rick. Yeah, he was it. He was it. Count of one, wrestling two, powering out. And uh, Michael's... Uh, Gaining the upper hand, uh, he sees an advantage opportunity. Now let's see what he can do with it against Wrestling 2. Using that, using that, uh, that pressure on the neck of Wrestling 2. Well, what I was going to tell you before we got sidetracked, and personally, you know, thanks a lot, Rube. I really appreciate it. Uh, Wrestling 2 and his mask has always been a covenant between him and the fans. Uh, he wears it for them. He defends it for them. And it's going to take a lot. For anybody, I don't care who, how oh. many there are, who they are, to jerk that hood off his head. Well, I'll tell you what, Buddy Michaels is definitely getting an education in the ring here on Southern I Championship don't think Wrestling. He's going to be the one to pick no, that down. Oh, no. Out. Oh, no. Snap Mayor, notice how two never really lets him go, keeping control of him at all times. Firing Michaels off into the ropes, catching this man with a backdrop. Uh oh, man, on. watch out! I see that million dollar knee. Well, could this be it? Good night. That should be all for Buddy Michaels. Three That's counts it. over. A big win for Mr. Wrestling number two as he puts away Buddy Michaels this hour on Southern Championship Wrestling. The two getting a little opportunity now to, to celebrate that victory. Oh, wait That's a minute. From the back, Robley tried one of his famous sneak attacks. This time, Russell 2 is ready for it. Look at this. Wait a minute. From the back, the Moon Dog. It's the Moon Dog. Russell 2 has got Moon Dog's bone. Uh oh. But Robley reaching into that. Oh no, what? Robley's loaded the brace. Russell 2's just collapsed. Robley hit him with the loaded brace. Moon Dog. Moon Dog's got his bone back. Again and again, Robley finding his mark with the loaded brace as the Moon Dog comes down with that bone on Wrestling 2. They're going for the mask. They're going for the mask. Hang on, we got some wrestlers coming in from the back. Moon Dog cuts off young Curtis Thompson. Robley can never see. No, cease. here comes Curtis. Hang on, Curtis is trying to save. Wrestling two and save his mask. We got two and three guys down on the floor. The referee is down, Moon Dog and Robley. Well, Robley never quit. Will he ever quit? Look at this. Hang on. Here comes the cavalry. Steve Pritchard, Tommy Rich, Igor. Once again, underhanded efforts through the, through the efforts of Colonel Buck Robley. This is just ridiculous. Let's go to ringside with Rick Stewart. Rick? Close. Just close, but no, no $5,000. No $5,000 for Colonel Buck. Where did you find the moon? Let me tell you people something. Sometimes you got to sacrifice yourself in this business. That's just what I did. If it wasn't for a few of these guys right here, we'd have had the mask off. Everybody's want to know where the bullet is. I'd like to know where the bullet is. Two's knocked out. I'll tell you where he is. You got your opportunity, I'm sure, to see the bullet a lot quicker than you. I'm going to see my opportunity. It don't make any difference where we go. You're going to see Robin and the Moon Dog, and we're going to put our hair and our beards up any place we go. They get that two and a bullet in the ring. 
Remember, I sacrificed myself and almost got the job done. <laughs> no $5,000 bounty fans. More action continues on Southern Championship Wrestling. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling 2 just right here at the end of today's Southern Championship Wrestling. You came back, finally got a chance to meet a man where you could look him right in the eyes and came out looking on top just like you always do. And I also told you that I'm going to play the same game that he is. We're going to do a little backstabbing. I'm going to show you how the game's played. You understand where I'm coming from? And I'll guarantee you he understands where I'm coming from. Buck Robley, I'll track you down if you go to Timbuktu, Honolulu, or Alaska. Your ass is mine. The words of Mr. Wrestling number two. A lot of hard and heavy things coming up. I guarantee you, fans. Next week, another great lineup of Southern Championship Wrestling. You going to be here this time? I'll be there. Thank you, Rhubarb. <laughs> Rhubarb and I will see you one week from today right here on Southern Championship Wrestling. We'll see you in the arenas, too. Bye-bye. Southern Championship Wrestling. While we were away, Mr. Wrestling number two, who's our next scheduled competitor, and Ranger Ross, both climbed in the ring. They challenged Johnny and Tommy to come on down. Uh, no takers on your offer for a match, though. So. Let me tell you something. That's something I did not expect from that man. But I also will tell you this. If that's all he's got, he ain't got much. Let me tell you something, Rick Stewart. I haven't done nothing to Tommy Rich yeah, know, or Johnny Rich. I know. But I tell you what, they mess with me. They're barking up the tree because the last thing they want is me to get on their tail. Roger the Ranger Ross is justifiably so. Thank you. Uh, I guess we're going to go to the ring for our next match. All righty. Uh, wrestling two against Steve Bennett. As in, uh, discretion could be the better part of valor. We got some brewing here, Rhubarb. Fans, I know this isn't over. We got more Southern Championship action. We told you we'd gotten another one of those mystery bounty hunter tapes at the offices of Southern Championship Wrestling. I asked two to come out. Uh, this is two weeks in a row. This guy has sent a piece of videotape into the offices of Southern Championship Wrestling. Well, he's trying to give me a, a, a mind bender here yeah. is what he's trying to do. And, uh, you know, the voice uh, sounds a little familiar to me. Uh, it also sounds like uh, this man, uh, he's out to do what he says. Okay, well, two, let's take a look at this piece of videotape. Here's the second mystery bounty hunter. You want to pay special attention to this interview. You know, I'm still around in the area. <laughs> I haven't left yet. I haven't done what I came for. I was sent on a mission. They called on me. The nastiest, the neatest, dirtiest of all professional wrestlers. They've called on me to come in and collect a bounty. <laughs> and I'm here. I'm in the area now, Mr. Two, and I'm looking, I'm looking for you, Mr. Two, because I'm here to collect a bounty. Now, let me tell you people something at home. When I reveal myself, all of you will know automatically who I am, but until I do, like me and everybody else, I'm still in suspense, too, but I'm here for one reason. And I will get the bounty, whether it's in the parking lot, whether it's in the ring, it's at your house, it's at your job. Remember, I'm a paid assassin wrestling, too. You have the bounty on your head. I am here. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Two weeks in a row, no face, just a voice. Well, like I said before, this, 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 the man sounds familiar. I, I, I still don't, I, I, can't, I can't pinpoint exactly who this person is, but from the tone of his voice, he's got to sound like a very nasty individual. Uh, he, he, he's out to, uh, to collect. He, he's making that very clear to me. And he's not going to stop in anything in any way in order to collect, which is very clear to me. All I can say is to, to Mr. Mystery Man is why don't you show your face and why don't you get yourself into the ring and go ahead and try to collect that $5,000? Because personally, I don't think you can do it. I'll be ready for you anytime you want. Stay behind the closed curtains. 
and you go ahead and keep talking and running your mouth. But what happens in there is what counts. $5,000 bounty on the head of Mr. Wrestling number two. All sorts of unsavory characters are out to try to collect, too. I know you've got a match. Thank you for coming out, sir. The best of luck to let's you. Let's see if he can collect. Fans, let's go to the ring and rhubarb Jones. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, in our next match, introducing from Hendersonville, Tennessee, J.D. Wolf. And his opponent, from Parts Unknown, Mr. Wrestling Number 2. Mr. Wrestling Number 2, taking on J.D. Wolf today on Southern Championship Wrestling. Uh, two's in kind of the same situation I was. I was sitting out there talking to him. It's bothering me. I know that voice. I know I know that voice, and I can't put my finger on it. Well, it's like you said, that song. It, yeah, I know who that is, but I don't know who that is. But you know what? I'll tell you what. The, the, the wrestling, too, is a man who ain't easily intimidated. No, believe me. Uh, J.D. Wolf is going to definitely have his hands full. Good high hip toss from Mr. Wrestling number two. And two is, is in a position where he can't afford to relax for a second in any match. He's got to watch his, his flank every which way because... And not only has he got to watch a guy in the ring with him, he's got to watch uh, over his shoulder. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's no stipulations about how they get that mask off, just that get they the do it. Get the mask off. Then a guy like Dick Slater, Joel Deaton, Randy Rose. You know Randy Rose wouldn't be beneath sliding into the ring and jumping two from behind. Well, let's, let's just face it. Uh, Randy Rose, I don't think there's any question, is the, the, the word I, I think of when I think about Randy Rose. It ought to be, instead of ravishing, ruthless Randy Rose. Yes, without a doubt. J.D. Wolf firing a couple of forearm blows to the chest of Mr. Wrestling number two. Hammering away with little or no effect. Two. Whipping that arm bar around. Notice how two puts that extra yank, trying to hyperextend yeah. that elbow. Well, he knows every move, uh, uh, the consummate professional in his craft, and you're seeing it right there. The man with the mask, resting two. Two hanging on to that arm, barring it up behind, putting all the pressure on the shoulder blade, the wrist, and the elbow joints of J.D. Wolf. A little bit later this hour, fans, we're going to take a look. Bruiser Brody is here, the Whoa. baddest man in the land, and uh, it's always a treat for me when you know when I get a chance to see Bruiser Brody. Manny Fernandez, one of the most ruthless men oh. in professional wrestling, is back. Hang on, Wolf, a little cheap shot there on two during the break. Not the kind of stunt you want to pull on Mr. Wrestling Number Two. No, nope. no, nope, not at all. And and, and coming up, uh, fans, you need to hang with us because the Southern Tag Team Champion. Of Tommy Wildfire, Rich, and Ted Oates. A couple of men who've got a lot on their mind. Oh, yeah. Very, very difficult situation going on oh. with them. Involving, of course, Joel Deaton and Dick Slater, who we saw earlier this hour on Southern Championship Wrestling. To drive it in. Caught him right in the chops with that. Wrestling two, that. scooping down on his man. Count of one. Count of two. Lateral press, and he almost put him away right there. Well, I wonder if J.D. Wolf has ever experienced that million-dollar knee. I have a feeling he will before this match is over. If Wrestling 2 has anything to do about it, you better believe oh, yeah. he will. The list of people with uh, broken noses and busted teeth from that million-dollar knee lift reads like a who's who of professional yeah. wrestling. Oh, Once yeah. two slaps that sucker on, man, That's nobody it. gets That's up. It. Wrestling two, back to the front chancery. Drive it in across the jaw of J.D. Wolf. Whoa. And the strain that Mr. Wrestling number two must be under psychologically at this particular point. I mean, the guy can't probably even sit in the dressing room and be completely comfortable because you never know. You just never know who's going to come out of the woodwork and try to pick up that the bounty. The bounty doesn't stipulate in the ring or at the ring, does it? Yeah. Take the mask and expose the identity. Pick up $5,000. Two's back in the corner. Uh -oh. In the side. Two. That good night. Million dollar D <laughs> finds its mark. One more time. Another bounty man bites the dust. Wrestling two's your winner. 
We'll be back with more Southern Championship Wrestling fans. You stick with us. Now by the Batons. What is this? What, what? What is this? Can, what, Rick, what's going on here? I don't know, Joe. I was up front, and there was some kind of disturbance in the security area, you know, coming into Channel 36. Well, the, we can't take deliveries? Uh, all I can say is this box was delivered at the front door about three minutes ago. Uh, on the side of it, I don't know if the camera can get it. It's addressed to Mr. Wrestling number two. They delivered it. It has a, it has a sign on it, Wrestling 2 that says danger, warning, keep out, special delivery to Wrestling 2, and, and it's been sitting here. Now, I know you've got a match coming up in just a, a little while later in the show, a $5,000 bounty match with Manny Fernandez. Do you think it might have anything to do with that? Uh, it could be. I don't know. Uh, I was just fixing to climb out of my coat and everything else. Uh, you know, I, I'm fed up with this business. You know, I'm sick to my stomach about it. Uh, every time I turn around, there's someone behind a curtain or behind some doggone thing. Now it's a box. Uh, let's Let's settle this once and for all. Let me just go over there and open the box. Well, if there's you someone in it, do you think that's wise? Uh, let me, do you, let do me you think that's wise? You might not want to. Uh, I mean, we're, look. Sometimes it's best to let sleeping dogs lie. We're, we're here on live television, too. And, and I mean, you know. It, let me tell you something. I have dealt with danger ever since I was rocked out of the cradle. And I've dealt with it ever since I've been in this business. And I'm going to probably have to deal with it until I fall over dead. So right now, all I want to do is find out what's in it, who's in it, or if there's anything in it. Your call. All right, well, Rick, Wrestling 2 is going to go over, and we're going to find out exactly what's in that box. What is this? Wait a minute. But that's Buck Robley, Rick. I don't. Where did he come from? This man has been in a hospital for four years. This man has been barred from every wrestling promotion in the country. Uh, what, Buck Robley here? How did Colonel Buck, somebody's going to, we're going to have to have help, Rick. Look I'm at this. Gonna, this man, down. this man was one of the top wrestling stars. Four years ago, he was put away. Look at the brace. Look at the brace on his arm. This man was known to put people out of wrestling. He was a bounty hunter. I cannot believe. How did this man get a permit to be license? here? How did he get a license to be here? He's, somebody is going to have to stop. We're going to have to get some help. Wrestling fans, the scene here in our studio is, I mean, we've got, it's just almost silence. They're carrying Mr. Wrestling number two. We're, we're carrying him out. We've got some guys coming, some of the wrestlers coming in now to help to get Wrestling 2 out. We've got blood coming from the shoulder, from the head. Out literally on a stretcher after the uh, Mr. Atlanta had the claw hold on him and refused to let go. Well... I just can't wait till, uh, till Wrestling 2 finally brings this thing to a head. Well, I know that these two men are going to be facing each other around the state of Georgia. And I know that uh, I would say this, Rubar, wherever in the state of Georgia or Tennessee, Mr. Atlanta and Mr. Wrestling Number 2 hook up, I would drive and buy a ticket I'll to see that man. I'd love to be ringside for that. Fans, if that comes to a town in your area, do not miss your opportunity to see these two men in action because that will be a grudge match. There's Mr. Wrestling number two, and he comes Whoa. right back on Whoa. the Hitman. The Hitman now, his eyes going back in his head. I don't think he knows exactly where he is. Whoa! <laughs> Listen, you can hear those blows all the way over here. You're seeing a number on your screen right now that you can dial if you would like to have wrestling in your area. If you'd like to have a fundraiser in your area, you can call Southern Championship Wrestling at 404-929-6111. And we will be glad to talk to you about bringing Southern Championship Wrestling into your town. It is the best way we know of to raise money. If you're a nonprofit organization or a school and you'd like to raise money for a booster club, you can call that number. We'll be giving it to you throughout uh, the program. Now look at this, Mr. Atlanta talking to the hitman. That may just well be what we've been looking for, Rhubarb. Of course, Wrestling 2 kind of looking over his shoulder. I, it, well, whatever Mr. It, Atlanta. whatever Mr. Atlanta told the hitman, it didn't work real well, did it? He's got it. Whoa! Back. Got that arm stretched all the way back over his head. Oh! 
Referee asking if he wants to give up. I don't see the hitman giving up from this, but he does appear to be in quite a bit of pain. Two brings him now to the ropes. The referee, of course, will call for a break. And the hitman once again going outside the ring. Joe, when I think of professional wrestling over the years, I think of that man with that white mask. He is the epitome of professional wrestling in my book. He's about to get that head going, and when you see that head going, Joe, look out. Did you, he did a little flick of that head there. Mr. Atlanta still at ringside observing. Whoa! Yeah. Wrestling two now with that wrist. He's got it wrapped and he's stretching the wrist and the arm. A rake to the eyes now from the hitman. The hitman with. He takes him, he throws him into the ropes. And now there's a crisscross. Mr. Atlanta Whoa. from outside the ring Whoa. trips up wrestling two. One, two. That would have been a crime. And now two goes over. Here comes the hitman. He rolls him up. Another one, two count. He shoves him off. Whoa! Shoves him up. There's that million there dollar is. thing. There, there it is. is. One, two, Midnight three. Early. That's it. It's all over. And now he's going after. He's got the mask off. He's got the mask off. What? Mr. Atlanta yeah. tries to come oh. in and runs right into the million dollar thing. And Joe, that's been a look long at this. Time coming. Two now pulling him off. Joe, that's been a long time coming. Wrestling two will not put up with it. He will not. And now the Deaton brothers are out. We've got an interview with the Deaton brothers, and they're going to drag out Mr. Atlanta. They're not going to let this happen. Remark, I've got, let me see if I can set up this interview and get this calmed down. Wrestling two has this crowd Joe is now, ringside has a very couple of special gifts. All right. The winner of the match, Mr. Wrestling number two. All right, I've been joined by the Texas Outlaws now. Joel and Haas Deaton, one of the top tag teams here in Southern Championship Wrestling, one of the top tag teams in the world today. That's right. Let me tell you people something out there. And you sit down and take your shoes off and listen good. And my name's Joe Deaton. This is my brother, Haas. number two as he takes on the Blue Demon, another man from Hearts Unknown, and Mr. Wrestling number two looking like Mr. Wrestling number two, the living legend that we're all aware of. Now, wait a minute. If we can, let's get a camera over at ringside. Mr. Atlanta has come to ringside. Mr. Atlanta has come to ringside. Joe, that's a man who said a lot of negative things about our town, saying that the Falcons can't win, the Braves can't win. He's saying that it's time they got a champion, so that's why he's here. Well, he's standing here at ringside now and observing the match, and you know he's had a lot of bad things to say, not only about Atlanta, but also about Mr. Wrestling number two. And uh, I don't know. I don't I don't feel comfortable knowing that he's here at the side oh, of the ring. He's got his move. Two is going, I tell you, that Mr. Two shovel. And look at that huge man standing there at ringside, Mr. Atlanta. I don't even know if Mr. Wrestling has uh, realized that Mr. Atlanta is standing there. The Blue Demon now using forearms on the ropes, 
The referee telling him to break, pulling him literally back. Mr. Wrestling number two is been one of the greats in professional wrestling for many, many years. If there's a move in wrestling, he knows them all. Well, you know, they call him the man of a thousand holes. And, of course, the living legend. He turns it around. The Blue Demon in. And a forearm right to the face. A very legal forearm, we might add. Demon backing off there. Two wants a bite of him right now. Oh, he's getting that head going. I thought right. he was getting... And Mr. Atlanta looking on there, Joe. Uh, very intently watching what is going on in the ring. What a great crowd we've got here tonight at Miss Kitty's. You know, Rhubarb, this place is packed. It's a great place to come hear country music, and it's a great place to see professional wrestling. And I guess we'll be telling people when they uh, when we'll be out well, here again. We, like I said, we've got a great crowd, and a little bit later on, we will be telling our uh, viewers about some of the upcoming concerts here at Miss Kitty's. Down goes that balloon image. Is this going for Body a pin slam and two? One, two, and no. About a two and a half count. Uh -oh. The crowd calling for the million dollar knee of Mr. Wrestling number two. And look at this now. He's getting awful close to the ring. Mr. Atlanta Mr. staying Atlanta. awful close to the ring. Joe, I want to thank everybody in my hometown of Tallapoosa, Georgia that turned out today. For Rhubarb Jones Day at CB&T up there in the northern branch there. Had a great time. All right, here he comes. Uh-oh, is he it? Well, there's the lead. Oh. The Blue Demon is down, and I'll tell you, that'll be a three count. One, That's two, it. three, over. and that over, is it. Mr. Wrestling number two is the winner. And now Mr. Atlanta has disappeared. Now we turn around, and Mr. Atlanta is nowhere to be found. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, you're not supposed to be over in this area. What we have here is strictly a place of jealous, mistaken identity. This man with a million-dollar knee left, the big Georgia legend, is walking around here thinking he's a big deal. Well, I don't know who misinformed him, but, buddy, let me tell you one thing. I'm the man that makes things happen here. I'm Mr. Atlanta. I'm the 270 pounds of cultured bulk. And it, it, it grabs my soul to have to stand out here and watch him parade around with thongs of little teeny boppers and training bras, hollering for you and supporting you. Well, now, just when you're looking real good, too, I'm fed up with it to here. I'm going to cut it off. You see, that just don't make you the man that you want to be. And let me tell you something. When you get ready to walk that aisle and to take the ring with me, mister, you better be willing to pay the price. Because that million dollar knee will be real hard to operate with a broken leg. It's been your pleasure. Well, that's Mr. Atlanta, and he has some very unkind words about Mr. Wrestling number two. We'll take a break. We've got more great action coming up right after this. There you see Mr. Wrestling number two giving his robe to Festus, who is once again this week out at ringside. Festus in the front row of ringside, and what a trophy that's got to be, holding Mr. Wrestling number two's robe during this match. All right, Nick Busick starting off with David Sledge. Sledge and Spangler, a new team here to Georgia All-Star Wrestling. And then right off the bat, Sledge finds out that Busick is not going to be pushed around. He's not going to be able just to shove Busick. This could be an interesting, both of these men pretty large. Sledge now pushing Busick back into the ropes. Big forearm, but Busick answers with two forearms of his own. Takes Sledge now and right into wrestling two. All right, wrestling two tags in. Comes in David Sledge, slow to get up. What a tag team these two men make, wrestling two and Nick Busick. 
speaking of tag teams, with me here now, uh, I see watching the action. Let me see if I can get some comments from the Dixie Mafia. And Mike, this is a tag team that you guys have to be wary of, Wrestling 2 and Nick Busey, the powerhouse and the living legend. Well, let me tell you something about Nick Busey. You know, last time I've been around here a little while, Nick Busey had to steal my violin case. And everybody knows I got an ear for music. And I'll tell you what, I wrapped this thing around his back because he's nothing but a thief. And Joe Wrestling number two is nothing but a man that's going to get his mask taken off by the invader. And I'll bet you money on it. All right, well, there are a lot of people out there that won't agree with that. But uh, I will say we've been impressed with the Invader, but I'm going to tell you, they don't call Wrestling 2 the living legend for nothing. Right now, as you can see, Busick using his strength on Scott Spangler, and he's pulling that neck back, wrenching the neck. Spangler turns around. There's another tag. Quick tags from the team of Wrestling 2 and Nick Busick. Two using using a fist on the man. He ought to be kicked out of wrestling for that. I do believe he's using the uh, open side of the forearm and the open palm of the fist, which uh, is a legal maneuver, Mr. Golden. I'll tell you what, I'll bet you $100 right now, Joe Pedicino, that my man Al Nitty right here can out bench press Nick Busey. Oh. Well, now that may be a, uh, a contest and a wager that Mr. Busick might very well be interested in. You know, uh, he has an awful lot of friends in the power lifting. Look at this. He's got the man up. He's got him upside down. Now, he, and yes, he's got it clamped on. He's got that upside down bear hug. That Spangler says that's enough. Spangler says that is enough. The Dixie Mafia not very happy with the victory, but Wrestling 2 and Nick Music are the winners of this match on Pro Wrestling 1990.